Hey everyone! In this video, I'll be discussing double fertilization and seed development. Together, these two processes result in the production of seeds. Seeds represent an important adaptation in the evolutionary history of plants. But perhaps more importantly, seeds make up a majority of humankind's food supply, so it's not a terrible idea for us to know a little more about them. Now let's get to it. In the last few videos, you saw how the male gametophyte, pollen, is produced in the anther, and how the female gametophyte, the egg sac, is produced within the ovule. The pollen grain has two sperm cells and a vegetative nucleus. The egg sac has seven cells, but in this video, we're mainly concerned with the central cell and the egg cell. The central cell nucleus is effectively diploid, and the egg cell nucleus is haploid. In this video, we'll finish up our discussion of plant reproduction by examining double fertilization and seed development. We'll be addressing two questions. How does double fertilization occur? And what are the functions of the fertilized cells in seed development? The first step in double fertilization involves pollen being shed from the anther and moving to the stigma. The pollen can be delivered by wind, insects, or in other ways. Here, pollen is deposited onto the stigma of the same flower, but pollen from different flowers or even from different plants can also make their way to the stigma. Once there, the pollen germinates. Just as a seed germinates by sending a root down into the soil, pollen germinates by sending out a pollen tube down into the carpal. The growth of the pollen tube is coordinated by the vegetative nucleus and carried out by the proteins present in the vegetative cell. For this reason, the vegetative nucleus is also called the tube nucleus, because it controls formation of the pollen tube. The pollen tube grows downward toward the ovule. The pollen tube is directed in this direction by signal molecules released by the ovule itself and by other parts of the carpal. As the pollen tube grows, the two sperm cells and the vegetative nucleus travel down it, and eventually enter the egg sac. Here is a pollen tube reaching the egg sac in our diagram. When this occurs, one of the synergid cells degenerates. The two sperm cells then enter the egg sac. One haploid sperm cell enters the haploid egg cell and fuses with the egg cell nucleus, forming a diploid nucleus. This cell is now a zygote. It's this zygote that will produce the offspring plant. The second haploid sperm cell enters the central cell and fuses with the diploid nucleus there forming a triploid nucleus inside the central cell. So double fertilization produces two cells, a triploid central cell and a diploid zygote. Next, let's take a look at how this fertilized ovule becomes a seed. Here's the fertilized egg sac. It's within the ovule, but I'm not showing the rest of the ovule in these drawings. During seed development, the zygote divides by mitosis, forming the embryo. The central cell expands, and the nucleus divides several times by mitosis. Followed by cellularization. The resulting tissue is called the endosperm and is rich in nutrients. 
The function of the cells of the endosperm is to feed the growing embryo. Here is a stained cross-section of a developing seed, and you can see the early embryo here. As another example, here is a ginkgo seed. Here's the embryo, and here's the endosperm. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that the endosperm is the foundation for human civilization. The foundation of our civilization is, of course, agriculture. For many crop plants, it's the seeds that we actually eat, and it's the endosperm of the seeds that provide the most calories. One paper estimates that about two-thirds of all human calories come from the endosperm of seeds. So let's take a closer look at this important tissue, and then we'll continue with seed development. There are a few different types of endosperm two of which can be seen in coconuts. The coconut is basically the seed. Within it, the embryo is about this big. The meaty part of the coconut, the part that you can eat, is the endosperm that is highly cellularized, called cellular endosperm. It's the cell walls produced by the cellularization of the replicated nuclei that make it solid. In the middle of the coconut is the coconut milk. This is the liquid that you can drink, but this liquid is also endosperm. It's liquid because these nuclei have not undergone much cellularization. So it's called nuclear endosperm. Getting back to seed development, as development continues, the embryo continues to grow by mitosis, getting bigger, and using up the endosperm. Here is another stained cross-section of a more developed embryo. Once the ovule dries out, we will have a mature seed. So what's the point of all this? One advantage is that the parent plant can give its offspring a head start on life, allowing it to grow into an embryo within the safety of the flower. Humans also do this by allowing the zygote to develop into an embryo and then a fetus within the mother. So that's double fertilization and seed development. Okay, so at this point and with some practice, you should have a pretty good understanding of the various functions of the cells and tissues involved in double fertilization and seed development. As always, if you want to review something, feel free to watch part or all of the video again. And maybe the next time you're eating a piece of fruit like an apple or an orange and you see one of the seeds, you'll start to appreciate the complicated dance of cells and cell division that had to happen to produce that little seed. See you next time.